Fasten your seatbelts. I remember when I told friends I was going to make the original Spider-Man a movie that I really wanted to make, and I actually competed to get the role. They were like, really? Mm. Really? You want to do that kind of movie? <laughs> because there wasn't a standard then. It was still quite early when they were adapting comic book movies. Now it's a whole different world. You know, when I heard it, I thought, wow, that's pretty nutty. But I thought, okay, they can figure out a way to bring me back. And, but it was really the pitch. And it sounded like uh, a lot of fun and a good solution. I liked the idea that I, I was returning to something, but the spin, there's a spin on it. And that appealed to me. Uh, for me, it's just about the money. <laughs> <laughs> that's all. No, no, if, oddly enough, Willem and I were kind of joshing the other day about how 20 years since his first Green Goblin, 17 years since my first time as Doc Ock, and these are the longest options that a studio has ever exercised <laughs> on actors. You know, it's like we've been waiting. When the idea was first suggested, I my first thought was, hang on, I'm 17 years older, I've got chins, I've got mm. wrinkles, you know, I mean, what, what, you know, what are they going to do? And, and then, of course, you, I suddenly realised, wait a minute, they've got the technology. This isn't, <laughs> this, this isn't going to be a problem. <laughs> And the Tom Holland of it all. Tom oh, oh, Holland, man, he's, 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 he's a crazy thing. good. Here's the thing. The young kid of him and his eyes, when we first got on the set, I said, look at this dude's eyes. And when he's, at one point, you'll see it, but he's trying to figure things out. That's what makes it amazing because it's like, He's basically torn. He wants to be cool with these with these guys, but at the same time, they they really want to like eliminate him. And then here's the thing: it's like because you, you're filling big shoes, you know. Because we growing up with Toby, you know, like man, I was like when Toby hit that wall the first time. I said, oh shit! I was like, oh. So you think to yourself, like, will there be, you know? And here comes this young guy with this fresh face and is really like in tune in every aspect, even when he's doing anything. And the, the freaking hair, the, oh, even that the hair, the Spider-Man hair, I was like, this hair he's is really, great. He's really impressive. Yeah. Also yeah. physically, he's just very agile and yeah. just has, is really yeah. skilled. So in doing the stunt stuff and the fighting stuff, he's a freak, man. He's, yeah. he's really clean, he's really good, mm -hmm. uh, really beautiful. And he's got a real film intelligence, mm -hmm. like he understands the angles, he understands the lenses, he understands how you work with the camera to tell the story, you know, what's the best, this or that. Mm -hmm. And it's so kind of, it's, uh, I'm talking, Willem, do you mind? <laughs> and it's so, it's kind of, it shows a real sense of, of he just understands it. He, I mean, I, I, I predict within the next five, six years, he's going to be directing. <laughs> The main difference between that film and this one is that the tentacles are, are all kind of CG now. They're all kind of, they'll all be superimposed on me at a later date. Whereas in the original movie, they were mechanical and I had them like, you know, attached to me and we had puppeteers working them and stuff. So that's the big difference. <laughs> you want to know the truth? <laughs> Nobody knows how uncomfortable those costumes are. <laughs> but they look good. We are actors. You forget about the discomfort and, uh, you know, it's part of it. But the costumes are much more comfortable than they were before. I remember the initial fitting uh, to create the costume for the Green Goblin. I stood there for eight hours and they put different uh, preformed pieces on me. Now they scan me and they can design it and then make the costume and then try it on me. It's a huge leap in the technology. And they're more flexible, we can do more things with them. The look's a little different. Uh, old sexy. Norman and the Goblin yes. have, uh, are further down the line <laughs> and they have a few more tricks up their sleeve. Mm. So there have been upgrades on the costume, let's say. I'm happy we got a new, new, uh, a brand new star, a brand new, a brand new look. Uh, the, the, the blue, uh, when we did it the first time, it was, look, look, man, I didn't, I didn't care. I was just happy to be, you know, in this wonderful course. And it was like you said, it was, you know, 
sort of like two or three hours or whatever like that. But with this, it's fly. The homies is like, okay, now, okay, we get you now. You know, when I was blue, they, was, they still roll with me. But like, okay, you blue. Uh, but uh, with this one, it, it just feels more comfortable. And I think it feels more today, modern. Like, you know, not trying so hard. Like, I, I, I sort of related to R&B. Back in the day, in R&B, you used to have to have fringes on your outfit and shoulder pads and things like that. Now, you can just, you can sing, you know? So it's like, now we're just singing. Who would be the best villain? It's crazy because, like I said, we've just been watching Willem. It seems personal. <laughs> because with uh, because with Electro, it's like Electro and, and us, it's, it's to the world. The world did me wrong. But when something is personal, and you can go all the way back to Shakespeare, there's nothing that could beat that, no matter what costume you put on, no matter what you say. So when he speaks, he has the power. They all have different qualities. But in terms of overall kind of scariness, I would go along with Jamie's assessment. It's just true. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, <laughs> William. You're just going to have to deal with it. But as far as where Doc Ock is in the echelon of who's more powerful, I think Doc Ock isn't exactly in the Premier League, but he's kind of nudging up. He, he's the guy that's arrived at the party and has kind of said something like, I've got the beers, <laughs> and they let him in. <laughs> These guys are really generous. I mean, not only in their comments, but, you know, the nice thing is when you have resources and you have people that want to be there, and this isn't their first rodeo, mm -hmm. it's a real good working situation. Mm -hmm. And flexibility, generosity are two of the qualities that you want in an actor, and these guys are like that. I'm going to kill the light. Hello, my dear. <laughs> But there's a part of me that misses the moustache twirling, I must say. I mean, there's, you know, there's a very long tradition of British actors coming in to play villains in Hollywood. You know, it started with... Not only British actors. <laughs> That's true, but, you know, it's, it's like, you know, I, I keep thinking, it's like, oh, we need an accent. You know, let's get, you oh, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. let's get someone in. Son of Darrell. That's right. Neil, the before Heard a step outside? Yeah, yeah, I get it. Uh, but the thing about grounded villains is that so many of them become villains almost reluctantly almost in spite of themselves. You know, an accident happens or some terrible tragedy and it transforms them. And that's what makes them very playable because it's not just moustache twirling. It's not just kind of pulling a face and, you know, there, there's some real depth to it and that's, that's what makes them interesting. I mean, it's a privilege to be here, that's for sure. It's a joy to be here. Oh, I can't go tell you, it's just so much fun. I mean, there's a part of us that's like, we're all, I think I can say this for all, we're all fans. Yeah. Long. That was my name.